so there we go no more noise on this 2019 f-150 that i purchased with bad camp phasers let's see what i learned during this trip and hopefully this might be helpful to some of you who are considering this truck but are concerned about cam phaser noise so let's talk about this truck now that you got an introduction to it um uh, this is the next part of this do-it-yourself project of living on a big piece of land and trying to complete this house built I want to say 75% on my own as I said in previous videos I will hire other contractors but that's not important for this video what is important for this video is I needed the truck I had the SUV and I have that Mustang uh, Mach E but I needed the truck so I went to dealership to look for the truck my god the prices these days it is unbelievable so being disappointed at the, at the dealership with the trucks that they have on the lots and the prices that they had I went and decided to purchase this truck sight unseen on auction in Oklahoma as I said sight unseen I did not see it I purchased it I got a really good price on it and suspecting that something will be wrong with it the truck got delivered I got it the first thing that I noticed as soon as I turned on that truck was cam phasers were making noise. On top of that, the cam phasers making noise at startup, I also had a knocking sound. It sounded like the engine is bad. However, on the end, it turns out that there was a bad cam phaser making a noise on idle even when the truck is warmed up and there is an oil pressure so in the next part of the video you will see what i did before i actually changed the cam phasers and that includes re, uh, doing the oil analysis from this car i wanted to do oil analysis to make sure that the engine is okay if engine was bad i would have to replace the engine or rebuild one that is inside it now let's see what kind of improvements did i make on this truck okay on top of doing the cam phasers and this one right here passenger side intake was the one making the noise additional improvements that i made on this truck because i want it to last long for me is i upgraded the um, radiator in it i have installed the uh, larger capacity cooling mishimoto radiator i think it's going to be cool it's nice all aluminum design compared to the stock i did replace the uh, thermostat I have put in a 180 degree thermostat or 185 one or the other uh, and then I did improve the um, intercooler I have put in the AMS intercooler on top of that I have replaced the um, spark plugs I put in the colder spark plugs why did I do that well watch until the end of the video and you will see involves involves the tune 93 performance tune that uh, gives this truck some power and you can see that on the end on top of that I have changed the filter to K&N filter charger I have replaced the battery you can see new dual S battery uh, the truck comes with auto steps make it look really cool I have removed all the stickers and I have installed the LEDs all over the truck including the long the low and high beam headlights so that's my truck those are the improvements that I did and the reason why I did it is 
because of uh, because of more performance and on top of that some of the parts that I replaced like a thermostat is to improve the thermal performance of this engine I did not like how hot it was getting when just driving on a normal stock tune and um, how hot was it getting so on top of that I will be replacing oil every five thousand dollars why because so before even attempting to replace cam phasers I have went ahead and got oil examined by Blackstone Laboratories they gave me a uh, oil report on my truck I had 4,500 miles on the uh, oil at the time of at the time of this uh, report so how does it look like well per them it says dollar board is an excellent first report for your f-150 universal averages are based on on typical 3.5 liter eco boost engines like this after about 6,000 miles have occurred on the oil your oil wasn't in place quite as long and where metals mainly aluminum copper are all nice and low next to averages which shows healthy internal wear okay and on top of that they do recommend uh to change oil over 6,500 miles no i'm not going to do that i'm going to be changing it at 5,000 miles tsb 21 no 3 which is even this one is superseded by something else from november or december i think it's 21 no 8 at this moment so i went go ahead and ordered all of these parts right here that are on next two pages the link to this TSB will be in description of the video well guys this is what you have always seen on my channel it is these four inverters and my power walls uh, now you're talking about cam phasers well guys I have been a mechanic a long time ago and uh, I do have a degree in automotive technology and was back some 20 odd years ago was uh, a certified ASC master tech with the L1 advanced engine diagnosis certification so this is my toolbox snap-on toolbox it's fairly big it is full of tools as you can see all sorts of tools tools left and right that I haven't collected over the years as you can see in this video so I think I'm a little bit qualified in regards to changing the cam phasers now the entire cam phaser job took around 14 hours it was performed right in this spot right where this uh, uh back end of this mustang maquis is i did it right here yes you can do it yourself in your driveway here it is how the cam phasers look kind of inside the car i have gone ahead and replaced the timing chains timing chain guides and timing chain tensioners also per TSB you're supposed to replace uh, cam bolts too now if you're interested in seeing somebody doing the uh, uh, complete cam phaser job I have uh, I have linked down in the description uh, links to their YouTube videos in regards to that but let's go and compare the difference between the old intake old intake cam phaser to the new one and compare the differences here we go we are going to take this one apart so the step one would be to remove this spring on it there's not too much tension almost the same as the old one 
that's a step one and then the next step will be to remove the cam phaser bolts so this is the new one that we're taking apart i already took out the uh bad ones and this is this is on the intake side only because the intake side as mentioned before was the only one that was making the noise when i got the truck so here we go it has a different plunger or this this different plastic thing that holds this spring on okay now for the important stuff is the lock oh yeah this looks different this looks totally different let's bring the uh let's bring the one that i already disassembled and let's compare okay here are the two back plates of these two cam phasers this is the old one you can see by discoloration and this shiny one over here is the new one everything else seems to look exactly the same inside the main difference as i said is on these two back plates now what is the difference the difference is this the old one the old back plate does not have a little bridge across this oil passage and you can see that flopping inside okay where the new one does have that bridge and it does have a passage underneath that bridge for the oil to flow and unlock this cam phaser okay so that bridge what it does as you can see it locks this plunger better in place where it's probably not going to flop around and cause damage where this one is it can go all over the place on that back plate now the other difference which i don't know is it normal or abnormal is this notch right here which you do have in the old cam phaser and you do not have in the new cam phaser i don't know is that just a wear by itself or if this is by design okay so those are that's the biggest difference on and improvement on this uh, on this cam phaser on the new cam phaser compared to the old cam phaser now as you can see right over here is it looks dark inside like, like oil was burning on this spot from a heat okay that is the reason why I am replacing oil every 5,000 miles and which I think everybody else should, especially if you had a turbocharged engine, replace it with the good synthetic oil and still replace it every 5,000 miles. Do not follow four recommended replacement intervals. Okay. The second thing is that I improve on my truck is I change the thermostat from 195 degrees down to 180 degrees Fahrenheit I have in, I have I'm trying to lower the temperature on the engine a little bit in order to keep this engine uh, from developing the same problem again now other thing and I think in my opinion what I think is the most important thing uh, that I did is I went ahead used the four scan tool and disabled auto start in my opinion and what I have noticed is that um, cam phasers I mean the oil pressure drops to zero once the car shuts off on the traffic light and then once you let go of the brake pedal the, the engine comes back to life and starts working again I'm thinking that without having anything in that engine and this is my opinion I don't know is there anything in there like electric motor that keeps the oil pressure up 
I don't know that that is healthy where the pressure drops and comes on and drops and comes on, especially if you're sitting in a stop and go traffic. So those are the things that I improved on my truck, on my own, to have this from happening again. That combined with this new came phase of design compared to the old one, I think will keep this engine running for a long, long time. And I want to mention that I have a 2015 Ford Explorer that has a previous generation of 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine in it without any problem. Those phasers in those engines seems to be very good. 130,000 miles on it without any problems. All right, guys, the last 10 seconds of this video start right now.